All right, and welcome back to the next segment uh, discussing the Dofer A148 dual sample and hold. Uh, last time around, we did a demonstration on the track and hold, and hopefully we're here for that because that was pretty exciting. Uh, I got a little bit carried away with the modulation, but uh, this time around, uh, who knows, maybe I'll get carried away again. Uh, we're going to be trying to uh, compare the two types of sounds that this can produce. Uh, last time it was kind of exclusively track and hold, and then uh, the segments before that were actually on strictly sample and hold. But this time we're going to hear what that sounds like when you mix the two together. So this should be fairly interesting. Uh, so to do this, we're going to have to try and set it up so that uh, we can hear the same signals going in, but just one version is going to be the sample and hold, and the other version is going to be track and hold. So the heart of this uh, sound is going to be our square wave that's outputting the frequency of our sampling, and we're going to have to actually feed this signal to here and to here. So to do that, we're going to use our friend the Malt here, or multiples, A180. There we go. And so now this is going to be duplicating our signal uh, out from here into here and here and here. So it's going to be going in several times. But before I start to duplicate it, let's hear what our dry signal sounds like. So this time, uh, let's go with the square wave. And we're just going to go straight into our mixer this time. There we go. So that is our square wave coming in. Okay, so now we know what that sounds like. Let me actually turn that down a little bit as we continue to patch. All right, so we're going to go from here, taking our square wave, and we're going to patch into the top, oh, sorry, to the top trigger in. And then we're going to patch into the lower trigger end. So now the same square wave is going to be triggering both of these sections, top sample and hold, and bottom track and hold, at the same frequency. So now we just need a uh, source to sample in both sections. Uh, and for that, we're going to use the A118 over here. And we're going to actually go out the random output, because I think we found that at least uh, in my perception, that the outputs coming from the random out were actually a little bit more interesting. And we're going to have to actually duplicate this as well. So we're going to go into the bottom section of the malts, which starts at the lower four. So I'm going to go into the top one right there. And so now this signal is actually duplicated three times below here. So I'm going to patch into one of these. And I'm going to take one of those and go into my sample in of the track and hold portion. And then I'm going to take another one of those here, another one of my random output being duplicated into the top section, which is actually sample and hold. And you can see that they're kind of going at the same frequency. Uh, just one is going to be a sample and hold, and the other one's going to be a track and hold. Okay, so we got that sort of going now. Uh, and we remember what our square wave sounded like. So let's bring that in again. So there's our square wave. And so now let's just hear our sample and hold into the pitch of our VCO. So now let's take our track and hold. I'm going to bring down the CV2 and patch that into CV2. Okay. So it's the same frequency, same random output going into both the sample and hold portion and the track and hold portion. Right now we're listening to the sample and hold version. So I'm going to unpatch CV1 and then bring in track and hold. So that's the second version. So 
so very different. So let's hear what this sounds like with uh, both patched in. So both sample and hold and track and hold. Not too much of a change. And I just turned the tune dial. I forgot that it was the tune dial and not the CV dial. But I could bring down my CV too if I want my just my straight sample and hold sound. Um, or I can bring in a little bit of the track and hold. Almost like a warbly type sound. Now if I want to reverse this, I can. Um, I can take my track and hold input out and my sample and hold input out and then just reverse them. So put my sample and hold input at CV2, bring the level all the way down, and then here primarily track and hold. And if I want to start to bring in just a little bit of my sample and hold. So there we go, we have a little bit of a variety going on here. Both sample and hold and track and hold. Going out from this module to inputs one over here, CV1 and CV2. At a certain point, it just starts to kind of gel together and it sounds more track and hold to me anyway than it does sample and hold. So if I unpatch my track and hold, that's my sample and hold sound, but this is with my track and hold. So while they are being summed together, it still sounds primarily uh, track and hold to me, just because of the warbliness. Warbliness, if that's, if that's a word. It is now. Now, of course, I can bring the frequency up of this if I want it to go a little faster. Or I can adjust the component of high frequency noise over here from the A118. Or adjust the red low frequency noise component. And get some fairly interesting sounds. Okay, so that's going into CV1 and CV2 of our oscillator. So I'm gonna unpatch these temporarily. And let me just completely unpatch them. Because now we're gonna set up uh, where those two outputs are gonna be going into our filter. So to do that, we're gonna unpatch from our mixer and go to the input of our low pass filter. And then go out from our low pass filter into input of our mixer. So we'll have just a filtered VCO. There we go. And I can adjust the cutoff and resonance to taste. But I kind of like it right there, so that's where I'm going to stick with it. And uh, now I'm going to actually take the sample and hold. And I have a little bit more flexibility with this one because I can actually bring them in slowly. So I'm going to uh, patch in sample and hold into CV2 and then go track and hold CV3. So I'm going to patch in to CV2, levels all the way down so I shouldn't hear any uh, modulation going on. And I'm going to take the track and hold from the bottom portion and go into CV3 right there. And now, find my cutoff that I like. And then I can start to bring in the sample and hold portion. And I might need to bring up the resonance a little bit to hear it. 
or maybe start to change the rate a little. I just want something with an audible effect so that when we bring in our track and hold we'll get something fairly interesting. There we go. So that is our sample and hold going into CV2. We actually have our track and hold patched into CV3, so let me bring that in and let's see how that changes our sound. And bring the resonance down a little bit. So it is slightly different. And then once I have the basic patch down, you know, I can start to adjust this sound by bringing up the frequency if I want. Adjust the cutoff. Or I can even go over to my noise module and adjust that since that's actually what's being sampled going into my sample and hold portion or my track and hold portion. So I can bring up the low, the high frequency component of my noise or the low frequency component or adjust the rate at which it's going. There we go. And we just kind of season it to taste until we get something that we like. You get some fairly interesting sounds in the self-oscillation mode, but I actually lose a lot of my trying or my uh, square wave going in, and that part I don't like. So I want to back off a little bit on my resonance. There we go. I can go all the way to the max on my LFO if I want. But it almost gets so fast that I can't hear the change happening anymore. Which may be a good thing, maybe a bad thing. Okay, so we got some fairly interesting sounds going on. And we could go a little further, but uh, I think you get the idea of what I was trying to show you is that, you know, if I want to now, I can turn down CV2, basically muting my sample and hold signal going to my filter, and just have a track and hold signal going in at CV3, or I can do the opposite, mute the track and hold input, bring in my sample and hold CV signal. So I have options. It's basically the idea. Still like the manual. And then just for kicks, we're gonna actually take another um, waveform and patch it into CV1. And then do all three. And in this particular situation, I may actually want to take my sine wave out of my CV1 and maybe put my sample and hold into the primary CV1 and then take my sine wave 
out from my LFO into CV2. That way I can have more control over the sine wave. Of course I can bring my frequency up a little bit. Or I can bring it down. When I'm bringing that down, since I have that actually uh, performing two functions, I'm actually bringing down the rate of my sample and hold triggering as well as the rate of the sine wave going into CV2. And I just kind of adjust that until I get something I like. Okay, so I think you got the idea for that one. So, and I'm actually going to take one more waveform, just for fun. I'm going to use a different color cable here, since I'm out of my black cables. And I'm going to go into my uh, CV2 input for my pitch. And I'm not going to go too far into this, I just wanted to kind of experiment and see what it sounds like. But that, to me, sort of starts to take over the sound that I got from combining my track and hold and my sample and hold and my filter. Maybe if I use just a little bit, I might be happy with it. But even then, it seems to kind of overpower it. It's no longer a sample and hold and track and hold patch. It's more a just straight frequency modulated type sound. I could maybe just for variety go into my pulse width CV1. Or actually, let's go into pulse width CV2. bit of a different sound. So, tons and tons of possibilities. I just kind of scratched the surface of what you can do when you uh, use both of these. And that's just with one single uh, square wave triggering both sections. Uh, if you had a larger setup, you could actually have two LFOs side by side and triggering sample and hold at one frequency and then the second LFO would be triggering the bottom section at a different frequency. Who knows? Sky's the limit. Just depends on what system you have and what you want to add to it and what kind of possibilities you want. So with that we're going to wrap up this portion where we were kind of comparing the two uh, sample and hold and track and hold and uh, in the next segment we'll look at uh, Sort of a lesser known type function of this module. We'll look at how you can use it as a sample rate reducer and hear what kind of sounds you can get from that. So stay tuned for that as well and we'll see you shortly.